Hello YouTube students, in this video I'm going to be briefly going over what you can expect for term 2 in maths. Remember to stay tuned for the whole video, I will go through each grade, what you can expect in maths, break down the different topics according to how the ATP does it. So I won't be explaining any topic, I'm just letting you know what's coming up, how to prepare for it potentially, and then I'll give you a quick summary at the end of each grade. Let's jump right in. Before I show you the topics, just please note that the order that I go through in this video is based on what we call the ATPs. These are the annual teaching plans. This is basically a document that apartment gives schools and teachers and that they recommend that schools and teachers should follow. So it, they recommend that we follow these or, this order of topics when we teach it. Some schools, some teachers do not follow it. They mix up the topics. You just need to check with your teacher and your school if they are or if they are not following the order of topics as listed in the ATPs. So what I'll be doing in this video for grade 8 to grade 12 is I'll be letting you know what you can expect in term 2. So topics, subtopics, in some instances I will let you know how to prepare for these topics. I'll give you a summary of the topic at the end of each grade and links to any videos that I think you might find useful. Starting with grade 8. Grade 8, if your teachers follow the ATPs, you will be starting off with a topic called algebraic exponents. So obviously this is an algebra section. You can see here that you learn all these different laws for exponents. They are actually summarized here, so you can already go and have a look at them, see if they make sense. You may or may not have learned them in grade 7. If you have, it's something that you can always go over and recap. Then you will be learning about numeric and geometric patterns. So these are number patterns. So it can be in the form of literal numbers written out like two, four, six, eight, or whatever, or they can give you pictures which represent a pattern and you have to answer questions based off of this pattern. This is not a new section. This is something that you should have covered already in grade six, seven. So if you still have those books, take a look, go over it, recap it. But this is a list of everything that you'll be covering in that section. Then linked to that, that previous topic, the patterns topic, is functions and relationships. Now this builds on the previous topic. So if you don't know that topic, you won't be able to do this topic. But basically, you look at inputs and output values for different patterns and relationships. You use flow diagrams, you use tables, you use formulae and all of that. So just take a look through this, read through this. But again, this is not new. You should have covered this last year already in maths. So you can always go and practice some flow diagrams, some tables, some stuff like that. Then we go back to some algebra. So you can't escape algebra, quite a bit of algebra in term two. Here we've got algebraic expressions and you need to learn algebra as a language, which again, this is something that you should have started in grade seven already. Um, but what you're gonna practice a lot of in grade eight is how to add or subtract like terms. So it says here, add and subtract like terms in an algebraic expression. But obviously you need to be able to identify what like terms are. There we go, grade eight. There's a summary of all the math topics you can expect for this term. As I said, go over some of your grade seven topics. You won't be sorry. Grade nine learners, if your teachers follow the ATPs, the annual teaching plans or programs, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, then you'll be starting off with algebraic expressions. Remember, your teachers may not follow this plan, so you just need to check with them. But if they do, you'll be starting off with algebra. Now, this is a very algebra heavy term. But you start off with algebra as a language. You revise things that you did in grade eight. So it's very important that you still have those books. Go over the stuff that you did in grade eight. Add and subtract like terms. Understanding how many terms there are. Monomials, binomials, trinomials. Understanding coefficients. Um, all those things. Something that you're going to be focusing a lot on in grade nine is the distributive law. And also something that a lot of teachers call FOIL or expanding. Um, and that comes in this section over here. Then, this is not all of the stuff under algebraic expressions. This is quite a long topic. The other part that's under it is called factorizing. And this is where a lot of grade nine start to struggle with math, factorizing. So it's a new section. It's basically the opposite of expanding or distributing where you get rid of brackets. Factorizing is where you create brackets. Okay, it's a new section. I do have videos on this if you want to go take a look at it. I do suggest that you watch those videos. I try and break it down and make it easy for you to understand. Go through some basic examples in the textbook. It'll make it easier before you do it in class. Then, yep, you guessed it, some more algebra. We've got algebraic equations. 
This is, once again, something that you did in grade 8. You solved equations in grade 8, so I recommend that you go and practice or revise how to do grade 8 equations because you build on it in grade 9, and you include the new stuff, factorizing, in this topic. So you use some factorizing in algebraic equations. Now, what I do have is I have a video that explains the difference between these three big algebra topics in grade 9 that carries over into grade 10 as well. So we've got distributing or expanding, okay, so simplifying algebraic expressions. We've got factorizing, which is also part of algebraic expressions. It's also part of simplifying to an extent. And then we've got equations. But I explain the differences between those three and I show you exam questions. So check the links in the description box below for videos on that. Then grade nines, we've got functions and relationships. So this is working with inputs, output values, flow diagrams, tables. You know, when you put an X, what do you get for Y? And writing that as an equation, a formula, writing it in a table. You did this in grade eight. You need to go revise it because what you're going to be doing after this section in grade nine is a section on straight line graphs or linear functions. And that's a new section and it can be quite difficult for grade nines, but you need to understand the basics of functions and relationships before you can even do that. So here's a summary of everything that's coming up in term two for grade nine. Then moving on to grade 10 maths. Now grade 10 maths, if you are skipping forward to this part in the video where you can look at the grade 10 maths topics, that's fine. I just want to remind you that the stuff that you see on the screen behind me, these are screenshots from the ATPs. It's linked in the description box below if you would like access to those ATPs and your teachers may not follow the order of the ATPs. But if they do, you'll be starting off grade 10 term two with Euclidean geometry. Now, Euclidean geometry is not new. Maybe you didn't call it Euclidean geometry in grade nine. But if you think about the geometry that you did in grade nine, so think about um, fun angles, maybe angles on a straight line. Um, remember, fun angles is corresponding angles, co-interior angles, alternate angles, all of that stuff, as well as similarity and congruency. All of that is Euclidean geometry. So you can see number one there, it says revise basic stuff learned in earlier grades regarding the geometry of straight lines, working out angles, working with triangles, working with similarity and congruency. So I highly recommend that you go back to your grade nine book and practice your grade nine geometry. It will make grade 10 Euclidean geometry much, much easier. You can see in number two, they speak about special quadrilaterals. This again is something that you should have started in grade nine. So go over your quads from grade nine, the properties, working with quadrilaterals, angles, and all of those things. And something else that you do in grade 10 that is new is called midpoint theorem. I do have a video on this, which I'll link in the description box below. Then we've got a second section for geometry called analytical geometry. Again, this isn't completely, completely new. You covered some stuff relating to analytical geometry in grade nine. For example, calculating the gradients of a line. That is basically analytical geometry. And you can see it's listed here as well. Calculating the gradients of a line segment. You will also be doing things like calculating the distance, distance formula, coordinates of the midpoint. Um, you work with quadrilaterals. So it's all about using the Cartesian plane and coordinates and using new formulas that we will teach you. So going over Cart Cartesian plane, working with coordinates, working out the gradients from grade nine. That will be helpful for you in order to understand and be able to do analytical geometry. Then our next big topic, as you can see behind me, is functions and graphs, including trigonometric functions. So let me just move myself out the way so you can see here nicely. So you have done functions in the past already. As I mentioned earlier, you would have done a linear function or straight line graph in grade nine. That can be represented by the formula or the equation y equals mx plus c. Okay, where m is the gradient, c is the y-intercept. You can see over here it says y equals x should be known from grade 9. Okay, so the straight line function. Here are the additional functions that you will be doing in grade 10, as well as the things that you need to know regarding your functions, like domain, range, all of those things. I have started a video playlist where I go over these other functions, so I will link that in the description box below for you. I will be adding to that playlist this year, so just keep an eye on that playlist. You also do your trig function. But I do recommend going over your linear function or your straight line function from grade nine because you will start off this chapter by revising that, by going over that. But your teacher's not going to teach it from scratch. They're going to go quickly over it because they need to get to the new function. And grade 10 here's a summary of your term two topic.
So grade 11, I will be going through your term two topics for maths. As you can see behind me, this is a screenshot from the ATP document. Remember, your school may not follow this document, but if they do, you'll be starting off with Euclidean geometry, as with all the topics that are coming up in grade 11. Um, which I'll show you a summary list of at the end of this little segment of the video. But as with all the topics, I do highly recommend that you go over the grade 10 versions of these topics because all the stuff that you learned in grade 10, you will, you, you will in some cases be using it again in grade 11 or you'll be building upon what you learned in grade 10, in grade 11. So you need to go over it again. Practice old papers, practice old class examples. And um, for Euclidean geometry, you... What you focus on a lot of, as you can see behind me, so I'll move myself out the way, is geometry, um, circle geometry. So it says investigate and prove the theorems of the geometry of circles. And you're going to be using these theorems and in some cases they're converses to solve different questions. So this does look overwhelming, but as your teacher goes through each of these theorems, it will be obvious, it will be clear, hopefully. And the more you practice, the better you will get at Euclidean geometry. But just remember to go over your old stuff as well. Keep practicing. Practice as many past paper questions as you can. And I promise you this section won't be that bad. Then we've got analytical geometry. And as you can see, point number one says you need to revise all the stuff that you did in grade 10. Because it's not gone and forgotten. We're going to be using it again in grade 11. But in addition to that, we're also going to derive and apply the following. So the equation of line through two given points, the equation of a line through one point parallel perpendicular to a given line, and then the last point, the angle of inclination, okay, which you will learn. But you need to know the grade 10 stuff as well. So once again, go over your grade 10 stuff, practice examples, practice past papers. Then we've got functions, including trigonometric functions. So if I move myself out the way, you will see, or you should recall that when we did functions in grade 10, these, here's the equations or the formulas of the different functions over there. And they might look slightly different to what you used to from grade 10. And that's because in grade 10, we focused on the effect of parameters A and Q on functions. So for example, Q is where the graph lifts up or down. We move it up or down. Remember that from, from grade 10? I hope you do. But this year in grade 11, we add P into the mix, the parameter P, and you need to know the effect of parameter P on these graphs and you also look at trig graphs and we add an additional parameter there as well obviously you need to sketch graphs obviously you need to know the effects of these different parameters and everything that you learned in grade 10 as well so once again you need to go over your grade 10 functions you won't be sorry in grade 11 here is a summary of everything that you learned or that you will be learning in term two Grade 12s. This is a this is a screenshot taken from the ATP documents. Remember, your teacher may teach this in a slightly different order. As long as you finish all the topics by finals, it doesn't really matter the order that your teacher does it in. But if they follow the ATPs, they should be starting with Euclidean geometry in term two. As you can see, you obviously need to revise all your Euclidean geometry from the previous two years, so grade 10 and grade 11. And then you have extra additional things that you will be covering in grade 12. After Euclidean geometry, you will be doing analytical geometry. So again, revision of everything done from grade 10 through grade 11. But in addition, you'll be applying a new equation, which you'll be taught over here, and you'll be determining the equation of a tangent to a given circle. And then last, but definitely not least, and this can be quite overwhelming because it is a new section, is differential calculus and it includes polynomials so you can see the list of everything that you'll be doing in this section and it does continue so let me just show you quickly all the way over here and you'll be using this and everything that you learned also to sketch graphs and then to be solving practical problems as mentioned over here there's a summary of your term two topic Good luck for term two. I hope it goes well. Remember to comment down below what you want to see in video format for this term.